I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, my friend Janina asked me this question. Hey, a few friends and relatives that leave in, live in the United States asked me about possibility of moving here, Nicaragua, and buying property with crypto or bitcoins. Is that possible? Will that work here? I promised them I would do some research. Wow. So that's a pretty big question, and it's going to take a little bit to answer, but we're going to give it a tentative yes, but we really need to dig into exactly what that means and what it would require. So we're going to get to that right after that bump. Before we can really answer exactly all the details that you're gonna need to buy a house using crypto in Nicaragua, we gotta answer what is cryptocurrency? Because that's of course what crypto is short for. So importantly, it's just a category of currency. And as a currency, it is interchangeable conceptually with other types of currency. So to make some of our examples easier, let's imagine we're actually asking the question, can you buy in British pounds? Can you buy a house in Nicaragua using British pounds? This is important because Nicaragua is a dual currency country. So the United States dollar and the Nicaraguan Cordoba are both legal, normal, everyday currency here in Nicaragua. So if you ask those questions, it's like, well, of course, that's the currency of the country. Of course, you can use that. So that would be confusing to use them as examples. The British pound is absolutely legal in every sense here in Nicaragua. You're allowed to do anything you want with it. It is just a random international currency that is not one of the official currencies of Nicaragua. And importantly, the Nicaraguan banks don't generally, they're allowed to, but they don't realistically carry British pounds. So you can't just exchange it for other things. You can't go open a bank account in British pounds or anything like that. So it is a full legal currency that you simply have no reasonable means of working with and that makes it really useful for our examples so in any of these questions if you can because there Nicaragua does not have a limitation it doesn't have a statute against the use of cryptocurrencies it is just another currency so as an international currency that you're allowed to use it applies equally the same as a British pound would so that makes it really useful for example what often throws people off is that cryptocurrencies Bitcoin being a popular one, the popular one, for sure, are fully legal in the United States as well. And you're allowed to use them for transactions. So people tend to think of them a certain way. But what's very different in the United States is that cryptocurrencies are a very big thing there. And loads and loads of banks and exchanges are going to handle them for you. So it's very easy to use them as a currency in everyday transactions in places like the US and many places in the world, simply because there are industries that are able to accept them and easily easily exchange them for a normal currency that they're going to use every day. So in the United States, cryptocurrencies, none of them are official, but many of them, easily more than a dozen, are easily transferable, exchangeable, and so forth with set rates, known ways to work. It's just very simple to use them. And alternative currencies in the United States exist as well, such as the Ithaca Hour, where it's a physical paper currency that is simply used as an alternative to the US dollar, you're totally able to do that. The United States has no restrictions on currency in that way. So it's very flexible. And that creates a perception that crypto is being used in a way that it is not in the United States, simply because it's easy to move it in and out of other things. Where this becomes confusing is that in Nicaragua, we have no such infrastructure. There is no exchange whatsoever, and there is no bank that accepts them. So the infrastructure that makes it easy to use in the United States even though Nicaragua has no additional restrictions, means that it's essentially useless in everyday life. So no one talks about it, no one has it, no one uses it for anything. But if you wanted to physically use it, you could. So we're gonna give some examples using British pounds to show what we mean. But before we do that, I just wanna note, a lot of people point to El Salvador and use them as an example that cryptocurrency can be used very easily. That is absolutely true. You can use Bitcoin for nearly anything you want in El Salvador. The reason that this is different, though, is that in El Salvador, they are, like Nicaragua, a dual currency country. And their dual currencies, unlike ours, are the U.S. dollar. That part is similar and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an official currency. It is accepted at their ATMs, it is accepted at their banks, and it can be transferred in and out of US dollars as long as you're in El Salvador. So in El Salvador, the Bitcoin works nearly identical to the Nicaraguan Cordoba here in Nicaragua. So if you're comparing, you'd say, can you use Cordoba here in Nicaragua to buy a house? Absolutely, no problem at all. You can also use it to buy a sandwich on the street. In El Salvador, can you buy a sandwich on the street? No, no, no. We sell pupusas in El Salvador. That's the first thing they'll correct you on. But they will then say, yes, you can use Bitcoin to do that. But can you use Nicaraguan Cordoba? No. So in the same way, you can't use uh, El Salvadorian 
uh, bitcoins in Nicaragua to buy street food, and you can't use Nicaraguan Cordoba to buy street food in El Salvador. But in neither case is it illegal. Someone on the street who was like, well, I have a use for Cordoba in El Salvador would be allowed to accept it. And someone in Nicaragua who would say, well, I have a use for Bitcoin would be allowed to accept it. But in both cases, they have no local banks that will handle that for them and no reasonable way of using that money. So it'd be an extreme exception and it'd be super difficult to use that in everyday transactions. But if someone was moving millions of dollars and they wanted to put in a lot of effort because it was a large amount of money and it was only available in that currency, of course they could find a way, but it would be outrageously annoying even at very large amounts. So it's worth noting that a lot of people think because El Salvador is in Central America, because it's able to use Bitcoin without any problem, they think that this somehow relates to other places and they, they miss the key point that Bitcoin is the national currency of El Salvador and it is not any type of currency here in Nicaragua. It is just a random external currency. Still okay to use, just you have to treat it like the British pound. All right, on to those examples. Okay, in everyday life, you're walking up to an asado vendor on the street, you wanna buy some barbecue. Perfect. Now, if you just have Cordoba or US dollars, you can have no problem whatsoever spending that. Both currencies are legal here and completely interchangeable back and forth. No problem. You can do it anywhere. Essentially, all people accept both. Individual bank accounts must be marked as one or the other. If you really think about how bank accounts work, it would have to be that way. Just based on currencies and how they float, you would have no idea how much money you had if you had a multi-currency bank account. So all bank accounts worldwide are designated to a single currency. Most banks and most people here will go out and get more than one bank account and often have one in dollars and one in Cordoba, and it gives them the flexibility to move either electronically. In paper, you can just exchange them. But if you're gonna do electronics transfers, you may need to choose one or the other. And mostly people use it simply because there are dual currencies and you do different things at different times. And sometimes people hand you money. It just makes life easier to work in both in most cases. So everybody does, especially businesses. Now, that said, you walk up to that Asado vendor and you say, okay, I wanna get this. I wanna pay in Bitcoins. Well. It's not that you're not legally allowed to do that or you want to pay in British pounds. Again, not legally uh, barred in any way from doing that. But if you give that person, you know, one pound, two pound, point zero 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 one Bitcoin, what are they going to do with it? Now, it's not that they're not allowed to exchange it, but if they're a Nicaraguan without access to a foreign market, how are they going to exchange it? And everybody who's into Bitcoins, this is important. You're going to get so much misinformation. Never ask anyone about this because we've done this so much. I've done it for, I, I work in multiple countries. I deal with people in all kinds of different markets and they're always convinced that Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies are super easy. And it's because they're looking at a single market that is pre-selected that has exchanges and that they have access to. And in which case it is really easy normally. But if you're coming from a jurisdiction where you don't have access to those exchanges, what seems incredibly easy in other places becomes impossibly hard. It's almost like saying, how hard is it to visit the Statue of Liberty? And you say, it's really easy. And then you say, right, okay, so I live in China and I don't have a passport and I don't have a visa. How do I do it easily? And you say, well, but uh, I don't know, right? No, you can't. It's hard. It's not that you can't. It's hard. And if, but it's not easy. You can't do it easily. But if you live in New York City, you just take the ferry or just walk down to the Battery Park and look at it. All right. So if your perspective is already living in the United States and already being within walking distance of the Statue of Liberty, of course, it seems incredibly easy. It would never occur to you. It would be a hard thing to do. But if you live on the far side of the world and you don't have the right to enter the country that has the thing you must get to, then what seems really easy to a person who's already inside, all of the effort is getting to that point, not once you're in that point doing the thing. So here, if you give someone a British pound, what are they going to do with it? Well, a British pound, they have a little bit of option. They're able to go to, uh, go to the airport and go to one of the Cambio stations, pay extremely high rates for small amounts of money, and they could exchange it, theoretically. I've never seen anyone do that, but in theory, they have those for people who are exiting the country. Normally, the transition only goes the other way, so I don't know 100% that there is a way to use that money, but you are legally allowed to do it. What you may have to resort to, and this is important to understand, if you were given British pounds and you had no uh, way inside the country to, to transfer it into something you can spend, then your option would be to hop a plane and go to a country where you can do that. Obviously, England being one of those countries. So let's assume you collect over the course of the year British pounds from different people who've come to your barbecue place, and now you're going to fly to England and there hope that you can exchange them for something you can use. The, the problem is 
in England, it's very difficult to exchange them for Nicaraguan Cordoba. But we're lucky here in Nicaragua that we're dual currency. You only have to exchange them for U.S. dollars and you're good to go. You can then fly back to Nicaragua. And if you want to have Cordoba, which is mo most people want to spend most of the time, it's just a lot easier, then you can in Nicaragua convert this U.S. dollars to Cordoba. A couple problems here. One, you had to wait a year and save up enough to justify the trip to England. Two, you had to fly to another country and do your transaction there. That's super expensive. Unless you're talking about tens of thousands of pounds, it's not worth it at all. You're just throwing that money away. Uh, three, you have to pay for that transfer. Your pound, when it gets turned into US dollars, you're going to pay some amount of fee on that. Maybe a transaction fee, it may be a percentage. But one way or another, you're going to lose some of your money. Now, you fly back to Nicaragua, you turn those US dollars into Cordoba, and while the um, exchange difference is incredibly tiny here, it's still something. You still have to pay for a bank or a money uh, exchanger to change that money back. So you're going to lose a little bit again. So there's all these different steps where you're going to lose money. It's super complicated, lots of problems. It's best not to use a currency that doesn't exist in the country. There's a reason why people don't do that. But that is an example of what it would take for paying a vendor in a currency that cannot be used at a Nicaraguan bank. So if you wanted to do the same thing with Bitcoin, the exact same set of things would happen. You would have to then go to another country, find a country, probably El Salvador, where someone is willing to take your money. Now, this is a little bit difficult because unlike British pounds, which you can present in paper, you can actually hand someone a British pound and they can hand you a US dollar back for it. In El Salvador, you have a little bit more complication that uh, Bitcoins are always in an account. They're never actual physical things that you can hand over. So because of that, you need someone who's able to take your digital currency. Now, it's probably not going to be a problem in El Salvador. It's probably not going to be a problem in the United States. But there's only so many places where it's going to be not a problem. But one, you have to go there. So you have the travel problem. Two, you've got to bring that money safely. Three, you've got to find someone who's willing to do the exchange for you. The problem in the United States, for example, is that Nicaraguans are not allowed to open an exchange account and they're not allowed to open a bank account under normal circumstances. So a normal Nicaraguan, even if they could get to the United States, which most Nicaraguans are not allowed to go to the United States, they cannot get visas. I know the people say it's simple. No, that is a lie. Nicaraguans struggle hard to get uh, even just a transit visa through the United States. So asking a Nicaraguan to go to another country to do some banking is potentially a really big thing. Of course, if you find a Nicaraguan who has a U.S. bank account, who has uh, a, a, an EIN number in the United States and all those things, then it's not hard for them. But they're the exception, not the rule. You're very few people. Uh, so let's say they go to El Salvador. Let's say that they find an exchange that's willing to do it. Then they're able to uh, switch it into U.S. dollars while in El Salvador and then return to Nicaragua with U.S. dollars. Now, of course, you also have potentials for lots of uh, risk when you're traveling with lots of, of currency. You are crossing borders with um, amounts that potentially flag with money laundering, which, of course, you just declare it. But those are all things you have to worry about and do. And there's potentially overhead and all kinds of risks. It's just you don't want to be doing that if you can help it. This is a lot for using an awkward currency. But it's worth noting that these things are possible. Now that's just buying from a vendor. So let's talk about buying from a friend. So if you're giving some money to a friend, let's say you borrowed something or you bought something off of them, it's not like a business transaction, you're just giving them some money. And you're both cool with using whatever currency you have access to. Could you use British pounds? Yes, but you're in the, he's in the same boat. What is he going to do with that money when he gets it? Same thing, you could give him Bitcoin. Very easy to give it to him. You have some money, you're exchanging it to him. But your issue in getting the money, if you're Nicaraguan, is where did you get it from? You had to go through some out outrageously difficult process to acquire those Bitcoins in the first place, but you can do that. And now you've given them to him. What's he going to do with them? No store is going to accept it. No friend is going to take it in payment. Even if you two worked it out, it's one in a million. There's only a handful of people in the entire country who'd be willing to do that because basically you're giving them a useless currency. They have to do so much work to use it that it's impractical. The hope is that you will run into extra and heroes, into foreigners like me, who might, unlike me, have a cryptocurrency account back in the United States or something. And then if you pay us for something, say you're going to, you know, buy something at my restaurant, or you're going to, you know, borrow something of mine and pay me in, in cryptocurrency for it, then I can send that money back to the United States where I have a bank account and transfer it into something that's useful. That's not a problem. But there's only a handful of foreigners in the country. I mean, easily a thousand or two. But but not huge numbers who both have access to all the banking that they need, have crypto accounts, and then would be willing to accept it for something, right? You need a reason to be paying them. So if you had cryptocurrency in the country under normal circumstances, the ability to pay someone with it 
essentially doesn't exist. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse, right? As interest in it wanes, as no one talks about it, as it becomes farther and farther from reality, it just isn't something that's likely to be done in the near future. So you you can do it completely legally if your buddy is willing to accept uh, Bitcoin in exchange for letting you borrow his car for the day or whatever. You can use Bitcoin instead of Zenmo, Venmo or whatever, those kinds of things, PayPal. But they're either they're already set up with it and it's no problem or it's going to be a nearly insurmountable problem very much insurmountable the majority of people do not have any means to have their own infrastructure to use bitcoin in the country they are completely dependent on the hope that they meet someone either a nicaraguan with a lot of external access or a foreigner who has access who is then willing to do banking on their behalf in order to exchange money internationally for them so while again it's legal and you could do the same thing with any wacky foreign currency you're creating a lot of headache and the real question is always for what benefit now now that we have this foundation we can talk about the house transaction. Now, why is buying a house different? Well, buying a house has a number of things that make it different than most things. But when you're in Nicaragua, more than in other countries, it is common for the transaction for a house or large property to happen outside the country. And this is completely legal and normal. But if you're a Nicaraguan and you're simply transferring between families or just buying something local, it's unlikely that you're both going to have bank accounts outside the country and you wouldn't do that. But a lot of times, Nicaraguans have external bank accounts and many times foreigners have foreign bank accounts and sometimes foreigners are buying from foreigners. So as is a common example, a American may want to buy a house that is currently owned by a Canadian. Just as an example, it would be actually quite strange if they were to transfer money into Nicaragua make the purchase and then have the other party transfer the money out of Nicaragua. It is a third party country as far as the transaction goes. And while the property that's changing hands is in Nicaragua, the money is moving from the United States to Canada in this example. So moving it through Nicaragua in the interim, it makes little sense. It's a time consuming process that carries risk and cost. Anytime you go through an extra country or even just an extra bank, there is cost and risk involved. So why would you do those things when you can quickly transfer the money directly from the US to Canada? Or if you have an American buyer buying a house from an American, even easier. Sometimes there's no cost at all to doing the transaction if it's between two American banks, or even better, all within the same bank. So it is a very normal thing to do a transaction outside the country, or at least some portion of it. Maybe some money will exchange hands inside Nicaragua and some portion outside, depending on just many factors, right? But these are normal things that are already happening. So if we were to back up and look at our examples that we said before, what if it was someone from England and they were buying the house from someone in Scotland? They both operate on the British pound currently. So under that situation, there would be no reason to move the money into US dollars or into Cordoba or into Bitcoin or into anything else. They could simply move from one bank to another, Scotia Bank moving money into HSBC or whatever in England, in Scotland, wherever in the UK. And they can do the transaction there. Of course, the contracts would be here in Nicaragua. The real estate that is moving hands is here in Nicaragua. And some money needs to move through Nicaragua in order to pay the taxes. So there is a transaction that has to happen here. But the majority of the money does not have to physically pass through Nicaragua as long as the taxes, the impuestos, are being paid here. So that's that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so if we're talking about British pounds, there's absolutely a mechanism by which you can buy and sell houses predominantly in British pounds. There's not very many situations where you're going to want to do that. It is only in that contrived scenario where you have two people who both have bank accounts that operate in British pounds, one transacting with the other. If either one of them was lacking that, then it would be really complicated and you would want to move the money into an intermediary uh, 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 monetary value, either US dollars or Cordoba under normal circumstances. So that is how you could be in a scenario where using British pounds makes sense. So Let's apply that to crypto. If you want to buy or sell a house in crypto, what do you need? Well, you need a seller who is willing to accept crypto. It could be that they have a bank account for it. It could be that they have access to someone who's willing to do the transfer. It could be that they, uh, uh, have, um, they're in a jurisdiction where they can find a way to do it. And you have to have a buyer who wants to put their money into crypto in order to make the transaction. So that can all be done. And it doesn't matter where the property is anywhere in the world as long as they accept external uh, financial transactions to do so or their country has crypto. In this case, it is the former. You simply do the transaction outside the country uh, and you do the transfer of the property inside the country. And of course, some amount of that money must turn into either dollars or Cordoba in order to pay the taxes on the house and any fees and such. But that was just, just be a small 
small portion, and I think that's understood that some ancillary amount will need to be done in a local currency. But there, when we're talking about something like this, we mean the the bulk, the the main uh, funding source could be from Bitcoin. So that's completely plausible. And then you would simply, you know, it, it, just to describe the situation, the person who is buying the house would simply do a transaction of Bitcoins from their wallet into the, the seller's wallet. They would then hand that information to uh, the lawyers who would then, you know, sign the paper saying that the transaction had taken place, that the money has been accepted, and then uh, complete the uh, the the register of the new property, and it's really that that simple. Other than you know paying the taxes and such, so uh, there's no reason that you can't do that. But you must expect the majority of cases you are not going to have buyers or sellers who want to do this to come up with both in the same transaction would be extremely extremely rare. There's uh, the idea in the United States that you would do something like this. Yes, there is a fair percentage of the population, maybe one to five percent, who's interested in cryptocurrency and for some reason likes it over the U.S. dollar. I don't have any understanding of why. Mostly, it's myth. Um, cryptocurrency uh, reduces the anonymity of a transaction. I and mean, it increases a bunch of risk. There's a bunch of reasons why you don't really want to do large transactions like this. In cryptocurrency, it just doesn't make sense. But there are people who are just really into it or have been really uh, uh, misunderstand, have a real misunderstanding of how it works and think that they have some benefit from it. And in some cases, there is a potential for the bank transfers uh, to be less. But that's when you're all within the country. And if you have a bank transfer that's really heavy, when you're doing stuff in Nicaragua, this is really important. You will never, and then this is really important, it is impossible to ever have a financial benefit from doing a Nicaraguan transaction in cryptocurrency. It's not that you legally can't do it, but you will never find a way to find it beneficial. It will always cost you more. No matter what misunderstanding there is, it won't get around that. In this particular instance where we're talking about a house, the thing that we're proposing is the opportunity to have some fringe benefit by doing the transaction outside of Nicaragua, in which case the cryptocurrency won't necessarily carry a big penalty the way that it would moving money into Nicaragua and back out again to be able to do the cryptocurrency. Uh, so uh, that people are asking this question Generally, we can assume it's because they don't understand cryptocurrency and they're thinking it's going to do something that it can't. Um, and it's because they perceive it being used in scenarios that are much simpler and they don't realize all the complications that come from international transfers, regardless of having cryptocurrency, that there needs to be banks that move money in and out of cryptocurrency or it has no value. And just all these moving pieces. Uh, once you add in those pieces, it becomes very clear that crypto is not providing the benefits that people imagine. What's happening is that people are doing bank to bank transfers or very something very similar in most cases in jurisdictions where all the infrastructure is in place. And then it can be a completely fine thing to use. So. Can you buy a house in Nicaragua using cryptocurrency? Yes. Does it provide benefits? No, absolutely not. That would be super silly. Why doesn't it provide benefits? Because it seems like because you can, you can do it in the US and there's no fees. Why isn't that beneficial? Well, the first thing is it's very difficult to find an escrow that's going to work with you uh, in cryptocurrency. So be aware that that's going to be a risk and complication. That why would anyone agree to that? I don't know. Maybe you can find a crypto escrow, but that's the kind of thing you'd have to do. Why create all that complication? Why not just use US dollars or whatever uh, uh, local currency you have? And then if you want to do the transaction in Nicaragua, that's an option without additional overhead, but still do the transaction in your home country. Do it direct bank to bank. You still don't have any overhead. You have no less or more tracking than you do with cryptocurrency. The idea that you can't track crypto is completely a myth. It is very traceable. In fact, it's more traceable than normal bank transactions. Um, and uh, uh, you have all those benefits as well in US currency. So uh, in a situation where you have people able to take advantage of crypto, you also have just as much advantage by not taking advantage of crypto. Crypto is simply only available in scenarios where banking is otherwise easy, realistically, and so it's perceived as being easy simply because by using it, you're only in a scenario where you didn't need it. If you need it, then it's hard and it doesn't solve the problem that, it, that you think it does. Uh, so in those cases, I think that yes, crypto can be used. No, it's not sensible to do so. If you say, well, but I already have my money in crypto. Okay, no problem. Just 
transfer it from crypto into US dollars, into Cordoba, into British pounds, whatever you need to use, and use that. And that will solve the ability to buy a house. Uh, so anyone who has crypto can buy a house. The idea that you have to have crypto and do your transaction in crypto doesn't make any sense. It's uh, fundamentally not a goal. And that's where part of the problem of the, the question comes in. That someone cares about doing the transaction in crypto implies a misunderstanding of crypto. Anyone who has crypto and knows what it is knows that you just turn it into the currency you want to use and do the transaction as normal and all is well. So there's uh, this very basic um, and a lot of people who do crypto have been sold a bunch of, of misinformation on it. Uh, basically, uh, it's not that the idea of crypto is all bad, and there's certainly times we wish we could use it more often than we can, but it is just a currency. Uh, the idea that a currency is ever desired or a goal is a complete misunderstanding. There is no such thing as a desired currency. That would come from a uh, emotional misplacement, um, someone becoming emotionally tied to a form of currency. It would be much like becoming passionate about using US dollars. That doesn't make any sense fundamentally. Why would you ever care about a currency? There is All it is is a abstract representation of a value. Not wanting to spend more than a certain value on a product, that makes sense. How it's represented abstractly in a situation that has no bearing on the source or the result is completely nonsensical and is a mental breakdown of people who are thinking emotionally about money um, instead of physically about money. It would be much like caring which algorithm is used to come to the same result uh, when you can't see it and it doesn't have any effect on you whatsoever. In fact, so if you're transacting in, in a digital cryptocurrency or in US dollars or in Cordoba, has literally zero impact on the final outcome. It is only how easy it is to do along the path. Uh, and in these cases, crypto is never, to the best of my knowledge, possibly going to be the easiest. It could be equal to the easiest, but it'll never be easier than simply transacting in, in um, a major currency of whatever country you're doing the, the situation in. So if you're doing it in Nicaragua, Cordoba, or US dollars is going to be the easiest. If you're doing it in the US, US dollars is going to be the easiest. There's just no way to make it easier than that, because at the end of the day, you have to get money either into crypto from whatever the source currency is or out into another currency. The time that crypto does potentially become beneficial is a situation that doesn't apply here, which is let's say you have someone in the United States and someone in Germany and you want to do a transaction, many transactions that happen inside a closed system and eventually you want to take the money out in your local currency. So let's say you have an American who's going to put in say $1,000 into Bitcoin and they're going to do a bunch of work with friends in Germany and money's going to move back and forth over a number of projects and there's a lot of transactions Actions, so there would have been a lot of overhead, but the crypto process allows you to reduce that overhead to essentially zero. At the end of maybe a hundreds or thousands of transactions, someone in Germany decides to take that money out and go spend it at a restaurant. They would then convert that Bitcoin into euros and be able to go spend it. The advantage of the cryptocurrency is that you're able to move the money from the US to Europe without having any uh, change fees going between the different currencies. And you're able to go back and forth doing work between dollars and Euro uh, euros in a fluid way because it's all being represented by a third party abstract currency, Bitcoin in my example. And only when it's all done without all the fees, do you then do a final transaction back into euros. That type of thing is where cryptocurrency is potentially valuable. But of course, in that case, you could have just kept a ledger and done it in dollars or euros and simply not used the bank in between and done it that way. So cryptocurrency allows for an, a third party wallet to handle that stuff, but at great risk. Uh, so it's very, very difficult to contrive a scenario where cryptocurrency is going to benefit in those cases, but it does exist. And I don't want to say that it's completely outside the realm of possibility but it is an edge case. But when you're dealing with something like Nicaragua, there's no possibility of it being beneficial. That you can do it, yes. Why you would want to, you wouldn't. Um, unless you were doing the transaction, you know, between the US and Germany, something like that, where both places are able to use Bitcoin pretty easily, but their working currencies and bank accounts are in different currencies. So that Americans are asking this only makes sense if they have selected a foreign uh, party that they want to buy from and uh, that party is unable to do banking in Nicaragua, uh, but they are able to do like the US and Germany. And so they want to do it that way to reduce the transfer fees and, and exchange fees uh, between the banks. But realistically, because you have to move in and out of cryptocurrency anyway, and that has fees, it would be pretty nominal to find a benefit in that because it's only a single transaction. 
it's really when there's lots of transactions without moving in and out of local currencies that crypto has a tendency to find itself to be beneficial as this abstract uh, intermediary. I hope that answers the question. I know that's a lot of different moving pieces, but the simple answer is yes, you can, and no, you would never want to. That's all you really need to know. Um, but if you want to dig into it, we do have a lot of videos that talk about cryptocurrency, currencies in general, buying and selling real estate. Uh, but if there's a real world question, we can, of course, dig into that. But I really do think it is a universal answer. You're always able to do it. Never would it make any sense to want to. Not just that it doesn't make sense to do it. It doesn't make sense to have a desire to do so because there's nothing desirable about the usage of cryptocurrency versus another currency. Just take your cryptocurrency, convert it to US dollars or whatever currency you're going to use for the transaction, and ta-da, you can do it that way. That is how it's meant to be used, and it's how it works best. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. You can buy me a coffee using US dollars, mostly. Uh, I think it, it works in any currency at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps support everything that we do here. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.